Okay, let's start the recording and get the jingle going. Go local with us, go local with adventure. You're on official cast to all things local guys. Yeah. Welcome to the Go Local Podcast YouTube channel. My name is Adrian, and I'm not quite your host for this episode, but I am wrapping it up and putting it together for your enjoyment. So, if you're wondering what's going on with the Go Local podcast, well, I'll be doing a separate video about that because this episode is unsurprisingly quite long, so not quite the right time to go into those details. By the way, audio listeners, if you haven't clued up on it just yet, you are listening to an audio-only version of a video podcast. A vodcast or a vlog or whatever you call it,、um, and normally we would play the jingle to open the、um, podcast, and that's it done. But obviously, as this is a video version, and I do not have any visual elements to use for the opening sequence,、um, that was kind of me attempting very badly to do a lip sync. So apologies for that, but it's kind of fun. Anyway, just a reminder about the Go Local podcast. It is an unofficial podcast made by local guys. For local guides and about the local guides program. If you want to know more about the program, do head on to maps.google.com forward slash local guides. And today I have an exciting episode for you. Recently, I was invited by Jan van Haver, a level ten local guide from Belgium and fellow Connect moderator, to be a guest on his excellent Let's Guide podcast, which is also another unofficial local guides podcast. So you may recall that I interviewed Yan in episode nine way back in November 2019. So just over a year ago, and the roles are reversed now. And Yan interviewed me at the beginning of October to talk about ratings and reviews. So Yan was really spotting to allow me to video this discussion. So this is episode 15 of the Go Local podcast, and that interview is what you'll be enjoying. So here with us today is, as I said, Adrian Lunsong, a local guide from a lot of countries. He might <laughs> tell some more about it himself in a in a while. Fellow Connect moderator, fellow podcaster. More about that uh, in a、um, couple of minutes or at the end of the、uh, interview, I guess. Adrian, thank you very much for wanting to help me out with. Uh, all the details and everything there is to be known about ratings and reviews. As I said, it's not my specialty, so I'm glad to have you here to answer all the, all those、uh, those questions. So let's just、uh, d- dig into it.、Um, ratings can be one to five stars. So, what is your interpretation of each? What each star level stands for?、Uh, that's a good question to start this interview.、Um... It's gonna. I'm gonna give you a, a quite a long answer to it, actually, because、okay. the way the way I do、uh, reviews and ratings is um,、mm-hmm. quite um, detailed. That's、uh, the easiest way to、okay. explain it. So whenever I do a, a review, I, I use a, a rating scheme,、um, and I use the abbreviation F A A C T S.、Um, and the simple way for me to remember it is.、Back. Yes, exactly. Yes, it, it pronounces facts, and it's basically stick to、Double、the facts.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly, when you when you're doing a rating and you're writing a review,、mm-hmm. you always want to make sure that you are as factual as possible. So I use the facts as a way to help me remember the things I need to re-、mm-hmm. review as well. And the way I look at it is that there's so many different things you can talk about in a review. Um, and I think the easiest thing for me to、um, explain it is that I break it down to different categories. So that's where the facts、mm-hmm. come from. F stands for food and drinks.、Um, the first A stands for ambiance. The second A for accessibility,、mm-hmm. and then you got C for costs and T for tips, and then the last S、mm-hmm. is for service. So that's kind of how I break it down、um, in terms of how I do a、mm-hmm. review and rating. And I believe it captures everything that there is to say about a, a place.、Um, mm-hmm. It may not always work, but it has always worked for me so far. That I've been、yeah, using、I'm、for past, past years. So. Can you use all of them all the time? I, it, it depends on the type of、uh, yeah. place, right? Yeah. 
Definitely, yeah. So if it's a food and drink place, then definitely you have your food and drinks category there. But if you're reviewing, uh, let's say, a bank, then obviously you don't consider the food and drinks. No. <laughs> Unless they serve food and drinks, then we should be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but for each uh, of this never, um, never category, yeah, for each of this category, um, except for tips, um, tips is a special thing that I use to remind myself what to um, say. But for each of this category, I give a one to five uh, star rating. Um, and that basically a one is usually like uh, very poor, uh, three is average, and then a five is exceptional. And obviously I, I tailor it uh, differently for different categories. So for accessibility, one is completely inaccessible by someone with mobility issues. Three is where um, some areas are accessible, but not all of them. And then five is for basically all areas are accessible. Um, and then for cost, again, I change it slightly where one is expensive, three is affordable, and five is a bargain. Yeah. yeah okay. um, and then basically to tie into your question, sorry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you ever experienced that you wanted to give three and a half? <laughs> uh, not really. So for each of this category, I give a solid number. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, I calculate the average score. And then the average score is what I use to then put into Google Maps. And then the average score, let's say if you end up with 3.5, then I need to either round, round down or run up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when I kind of use my subjective feel for it and just mm -hmm. say uh, it should be a four rather than a three or vice versa and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of use these five categories to help me mm -hmm. uh, figure out what sort of overall rating I should give a venue and a place. It's very structured, I know, um, but it's actually really helpful because yeah. it makes me very consistent in the way I um, approach any place that I come across. Mm -hmm. And I think consistency is something good to have so that you take a lot of the subjective uh, behavior out of it. It mm -hmm. can be frustrating, I have to say, because sometimes, like for instance, if I go to a cafe and I really enjoy the food and drink there and I really want to give the cafe a five star, but then when I look at across all the various categories, I find, let's say, for instance, accessibility um, is quite low. I do have to follow my method and rank them lower because yeah. of that. So it's frustrating in that instance, but uh, it's also quite um, it's liberating because I've, I, I rely so much on the structure that mm -hmm. I kind of take away the emotions out of it. Um, and then it makes it feel more logical when I approach it. If they have a very low <coughs> score just for one of them, it drags down the exactly, score yeah. immediately. Okay, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's and one of the questions I hmm? one of the questions I get asked right. quite a bit is that, you know, um, it's a bit unfair to rate a place down because their accessibility might be uh, quite a low score. Um, but the way I see it is that um, that may sound true in a way, but accessibility is a very very important um, factor to consider. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we um, embrace it and the more we put it into our consideration, it forces the business as well to look at it in a more serious way and say, okay, look, people are, are rating us down because we don't provide enough accessibility features. And that's where we need to you know, pay more attention to it. Yeah. And it helps everybody in the, in the long run. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's where local guys really can be supportive also for, for the total uh, community. And I think yes. also your structured approach is also very good good um, as, as just a, a, a guideline how to or on what you can you uh, what you can include in a, in a review people often say yeah what should I what do I have to write in a review uh, and ju just rem uh, remembering the facts then yeah. okay I can write about this I can write about that so that's the structured approach definitely has a lot of uh, at, uh, advantage yeah um, it's, it's weird because I, I struggle a lot sometimes well, well before when I first started this I struggle a lot to remember what I'm supposed to write about because, mm -hmm. I mean, food and drink is really easy, but things like accessibility, um, I, I tend to forget to include that. And because now I have the structure, I always include it. And also tips yeah. is something where I, I tend to forget. Uh, I, I include it to say, let's say, the recommendation for dishes that I think people should try. Mm -hmm. Or for instance, if you know um, there's a particular spot in this restaurant that's really good for views, you know, so I kind of try to include some special information to there as well. Yeah. Yeah. What I sometimes hear is people saying, well, out of as a matter of principle, I never never give five stars. 
What's your view on that? Well, okay, that's uh, that's quite an interesting way to look at it.、Mm. Um, but it's a bit weird because if you never give a five star rating, then you're effectively restricting yourself to rating a place from one to four.、Uh, mm. And I, I don't know. I find that a bit restrictive, and also a bit of a, a cop out in the sense of. If a venue deserves a five star and you decide no, I'm not going to give a five star out of principle, then it's it's unfair for the business.、Um, the way I approach it again is that, <clears throat> for instance, if you have a, a favorite cafe that you go to and that cafe is the best of everything that you've ever been to, but you still feel that's not a five star rating, the way I would approach it is that well, use that favorite cafe as your reference point and say that is your five star rating rated cafe.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. And anything else that's equal to it or better will deserve a five star.、Um, anything else that's below it shouldn't get a five star. So at least you're still rewarding those who's really、uh, put in the effort to to give you that experience and give you、mm-hmm. and you give them the five star return. And also another thing that I find is that if you use the method that I talk about, which is stick to the facts,、um, and you find an overall、um, average rating, a lot of times majority of the places you go to do not get the five stars because. Not every place will tick all the boxes.、Um, so actually, if you're very reluctant to give five stars, use my method, and you'll find that nobody actually ever gets the five stars. <laughs> That might be an additional tip there. That's uh, that's uh,、yep. uh, personally, I also think if if、uh, had it been a ten、uh, scale from one to ten.、Yep. Then it would be easy to say never a ten and nine is,、uh, but one to five, it's also it's already very restrictive.、Yeah. So, I share your the, one.、Uh, yeah, the odd thing that I've noticed is that if you ever look at reviews、um, of how other people sort of have rated a place,、mm-hmm. a lot of them is either a one or a five. Yeah, it's like、mm-hmm. if they like it, it's a five. It's like an automatic five,、mm-hmm. or if they hate it, it's an automatic one, and they don't go in the middle, which is kind of weird. I was fine. Because it's like almost extremes. Like if it's a bad experience, it's really bad. You give them a one. It's、yeah. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Yeah, that's also what I noticed. A lot of the one or the five star reviews are or rating or just ratings, no reviews. Just people、yes, leaving、exactly. one star or five. No, it's it's probably something in the experience. It's a shame that it's a, yeah, it's, it's almost like a a like or a dislike button, isn't it? It's,、yeah. it's the extreme、mm-hmm. end. <laughs> it's like that's all they care about. Yeah. So,、uh, in general, what would you describe as a good review for Google Maps? Wow.、Well, uh, okay, I'll keep this simple.、Uh, I'll do six points that I find that makes a good review.、Uh, so, point number one: concise.、Um, it should be short and easily understandable.、Uh, point number two:、um, make sure that your review is informative. So it contains、um, accurate facts and information.、Uh, point number three, I think a good review should be contextual, and this is quite a, a weird idea to get my、uh, to get your head around it because this is something that was mentioned in Connect Live 2019, and that's something that I'm trying to incorporate into the way I, I write reviews. And basically, the reason behind it is that you want to keep your review short,、um, but to be short, you need to only mention the things that's important. So that's very contextual information is is really important.、Um, you want to think about who your target audience is、uh, in in terms of who the your review should be targeted for, and also it's like what's the main objective of the place, and that helps you give you a, a better idea of how to write a contextual uh, review. Um, it needs to be objective, so no personal attacks.、Uh, take all your emotions out of it and try to minimize any bias. I know it's kind of hard because we're humans.、Um, point number、uh, five is make it useful. And this is quite similar to informative.、Um, basically, you want to write in- reviews that provides information that's that's really useful for other people to read, and they can find out stuff that you wouldn't get from, let's say, the website or from like asking other people and stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. Um, and the last point is make it constructive. And basically,、mm-hmm. this means that if you're going to write a negative review, make sure that it's not like、um, it's bad, and then that's it, and you don't explain why is it bad because that doesn't help anybody. So be constructive in your negative reviews, and also mention how to improve it if you can.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I also often like to include something you can only figure out if you've been there. Like yes, the chairs are really comfy. 
or the music they they play is is really my taste something like uh, like this it's that's that's no way you can find out from the website yes uh you mentioned uh, uh negative reviews uh let's talk about positive and negative reviews yeah uh, should you write negative reviews some people say no i only post positive reviews uh, my my general answer is that yes, if you feel that a place is not providing you with a good experience, um, you shouldn't shy away from mentioning it. Um, so yes, do write negative reviews if you feel that it's legitimate. Um, but obviously the main, um, I think the, the concept behind it is that if it's going to be a negative review, make sure that it's objective. Um, make sure that you know, you're being fair to the business. And you're not saying it's bad business because or bad experience because of something that's just really random or, or, or weird that's happened in your know, experience. Um, so make sure that you provide constructive suggestions as well on how they can improve because that helps. Um, you know, and it's, it's a great way to provide feedback to the businesses because they want to know what they're doing wrong as well so that they can improve. So negative reviews are actually pretty useful. Uh, I think businesses would actually... Uh, learn more from a negative review than from a positive review because, you know, positive review, they're already doing doing it right. So, you know, they don't need to change much, but negative review really helps in that case. Yeah, it's it's an opportunity to them. They should, uh, they should see it. Uh, yeah. Can a local guide leaving a uh, negative review face legal consequences? Uh, <clears throat> that's quite funny because there was um, a news article recently about um, someone who wrote a negative review on a competing platform. So he wasn't on Google Maps and he apparently got into legal issues with it, with the business owner for it. So mm -hmm. the answer is yes, I think you can face legal consequences. It obviously, it depends on the, the country that you're in. Some countries um, have laws that um, are very much um, protecting or against defamation. So if you're saying something bad about a, a, a venue or a place, make sure that you can back it up with actual evidence. Um, with reviews, it's really challenging because a lot of it is like, it's, it's what you say against what they say. There's no evidence to back anything up. So it does kind of go against you if you write a bad uh, review and the company takes legal action against you. So... Mm -hmm. You just have to be really careful. And again, the way I would approach it is that if you are objective in your review, if you're courteous, mm -hmm. if you're constructive, there's chances are there's nobody going to pursue you with a, a legal lawsuit, you know, because when you read the review, it's, it's a nice review saying that, yes, I had a bad experience, and but, you know, mm -hmm. this is how you should improve it, and I hope to come back and see some improvement in it. You know, so it's only fair. That's what I think is, is in what you just said, uh, the most important part uh, that you describe your experience, that you make sure yes. you're not saying this is a bad place, but that you say my experience there was yeah. not perfect. And because of this, this and this uh, thing, so that, that you're not stating facts about negative stuff, uh, because then in some countries, as you said, you could uh, indeed uh, face... Um, legal uh, consequences yes um suppose you visit a place where you already published a review a couple of years ago and this has either dramatically changed the place itself or your experience now is really different from what it was uh, the first time you uh, uh, visited the place uh -huh. what do you do then in in those uh, scenarios um i would definitely update the review um, that I've already written for it because um, the world is constantly changing, you know, like especially this year. <laughs> this year is a big, huge change for everybody, you know. So, you know, with social distancing, with all that happening, with, with like hygiene levels and all that stuff, you know, it's actually really good to update your review to say, hey, you know what, this cafe that I used to go to, the operating hours has now changed. And they now have a new uh, procedure to enter the, 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 the venue where you have to get yourself temperature scan, wash your hands, etc. stuff like that. So it's really good to include all those changes into a new review. And there are, I guess, different ways to approach this. You can either rewrite your whole review uh, if you wanted to, so start from scratch all over again. Um, but the method that I normally use is that um, I keep my old review as well, and I actually add a date to it. So I always, I'll say like this review was written two okay. years ago 
And then I write my new review above it and I include the, the latest date. Oh, actually, you don't need to include the latest date because that will show in, in Google Maps. Yes, um, show when it was last uh, Exactly, changed. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's really useful because it provides a, a historical context of when you were last there and what, what it was like before the experience and what's changed. Um, for me, anyway, anyway, I find it interesting to have the extra information because when I go back to it and read it again, I'm like, oh, okay. I've been here so many times uh, and my experience, I keep changing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to know that. Um, I don't know whether the business would find it useful. I don't know, but to me, more information is always good. <laughs> I don't know. Have you, have you ever uh, uh, come across the situation where you wanted to write a review for a place and then noticed, hey, I already wrote a review here uh, yes. years ago? <laughs> I've also experienced the reverse okay. of it where um, I'm, okay. I, I was pretty sure I wrote a review for this and then it's like, it's not mm -hmm. there anymore. I'm like, is this one of those glitch where my review disappears <laughs> for some reason? <laughs> Um, but I don't know, yeah. But a quick question to you, because you probably know this, you don't get any extra points, right, for updating your review? Uh, I think only if your previous review was less than 200 characters and the update makes it more than 200, then you will get the uh, 10 okay. extra points, I guess. But right, okay. no, you're right, you're right. So that's less of an incentive for a lot of people to update, uh, uh, review people more focusing on the gamification and the points and stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't think so. There's, there's no extra points for updating uh, reviews. Perhaps but then, idea exchange. <laughs> <laughs> but then if you, if you upload new photos, you're always going to get the points yes, for it, isn't uh, it? Yeah. Yeah. For some, some new dishes, photos is always uh, <laughs> possible. Um, you could also come across a review on a place on maps that is uh, containing things or claims that you are definitely sure that are not correct. Uh -huh. Is there any way to report uh, those reviews? Yes, definitely. So if you come across any review that is incorrect or is, is giving misinformation or, or even for other various reasons that is not true, uh, it breaks against the policies, you can flag it up. So if uh, you look at a review, every review has um, the three dot button thing, what we call it. Yeah. I think it's called the overflow mm -hmm. menu. If you click on it, then you can say report the, the review. And once you press that, you can then choose between, um, I think, five different categories of, of yeah. what the review is, what's wrong with the review. So mm -hmm. one of it's not relevant, this conflict of interest, mm -hmm. this offensive or sexually explicit, and then there's a privacy concern and legal issue. Um, so yeah. yeah, you can choose between those reasons to yeah. explain why you think that that yeah. review should be removed. Right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the, if you choose the legal one, then you're routed to yet another form. And then I think this gets a higher priority and they okay. can take uh, fast action uh, on, on that. By the way, um, uh, the things we've discussed so far and we'll discuss uh, later on if there's a relevant link uh, to the Google help section or connect articles or whatsoever. Obviously, I will link to those in the uh, show notes. Uh, have you done that yourself, reporting bad reviews? I have, but uh, not very often. Uh, most of the times when I do report it, it's mainly because it's not relevant. So someone would okay. just provide some really random review and I go like, no, that's not relevant to this particular venue or they've, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's very rare to get conflict of interest because you kind of yeah. need to know the people mm -hmm. who's involved in this whole process mm -hmm. and, and the rest, thankfully, I've never seen any sexually explicit reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the, uh, ultimate, the AI stuff from yeah. Google is uh, picking those up quite quickly. <laughs> and confidently, yeah. Um, suppose you're a business owner. So then, of course, you're very happy with uh, uh, reviews. So why wouldn't you, as business owner, review your own place, obviously with a five-star rating and review? <laughs> what would speak against that? But what if you give yourself a one-star review? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, yeah, well... Yeah, I don't think that happens. <laughs> perhaps, but the, uh, those those businesses won't be around for a long time, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not very familiar with the Google My Business side of things, which uh, I'm pretty sure lots of people in the local guides community are. But I'm pretty sure that you cannot, if you're a business owner, uh, review your own place because that would be a, a conflict of interest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's one of the cases where you could use this uh, conflict of interest if it's clearly from... Uh, um, so, but then surely if you can't review your own place, there's some competitors that you could give a one-star rating and review. Yeah. What about Again, that? That, that will also be a conflict of interest. Um, and unfortunately, it's one of those things where if you do have a bad experience at a competitor's place, as a consumer... Uh, I don't think you're allowed. I'm not sure. It's a gray area for me, but I don't think you're allowed because mm -hmm. that would still be, be a conflict of interest. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, again, really hard for yourself to back it up properly and say, look, I'm a consumer here, not as a business owner. Um, again, the way I would approach yeah. it is that have separate accounts. Is it the, mm -hmm. the way if you really want to do it? Um, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And also, if yeah. you run a pit, if you run a pizza place, you could say, I need to check out all my competitors and give an honest review while I'm there. But yeah, great area, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and chances are you, you're going to be biased. You're not going to be writing a very honest review. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say avoid it, completely avoid it. It's, it's, not, it's not the right thing to do. If you invest a lot of time in writing reviews, as you uh, explained at the start with your facts uh, method, and so then, then it, it's yeah, quite a bit of work to, to create such a review, then you say, okay, now I've created this uh, text, but there's not only Google Maps, there's also other platforms where uh, reviews are uh, highly wanted. Should you just, or could you and should you just take this review you've written for Maps and publish it also on those other platforms? Mm -hmm. um, the way I look at it against your, your review and your photos, those are your experience and your, info, your personal information. Um, so yeah, it's entirely up to you what you want to do with it. If you want to submit it to Google Maps, that's great. Obviously, I encourage that. <laughs> I'm biased towards that. Um, but if you want to put it on competing platforms, um, you can do so as well. As, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do so because that's your own personal information. Um, but my advice would be actually submit it to Google Maps and then you share the link to that review to other platforms. Um, and that way, it's, 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 it feels more logical in my brain because you're making sure that everybody is looking at one single point source of information, which is your reviews. Uh, rather than spreading it out, um, you know, like you have your reviews on Google Maps, you have another uh, duplicate review on another platform, and then you've got mm -hmm. different view counts and all that stuff. So um, the only reason why I would say that you will want to um, publish separately or independently on another platform, if that platform has better metrics, you know, so it gives you better insights of how many people view mm -hmm. your review and how many liked it and how many people in um, interacted with it, um, if that's the case, then I guess you could um, repost it on a, on a different um, mm. platform. I yeah. think that's the right answer. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm also not sure if it's a yes or a no there. Uh, I only uh, noticed myself uh, that um, some people, some local guides who write extensive reviews and uh, have told me, yeah, uh, I'm also publishing this on other platforms, mm -hmm. have seen that their reviews on maps were put to, were, were all of a sudden no longer visible to other uh, local guides. Uh, wow, okay. La labeled as private. And probably, my guess, but this is pure speculation, because um, it's duplicate content on the internet. And we know that Google, the AI, is looking for duplicate content all uh, all the time. Yeah. That's Just quite interesting. One, one, yeah. One, of the, yeah, one of the things that could could be playing uh, there. Yeah. Have you seen this? I, sorry, I, I would imagine that, because I um, in previous Connect Live events, um, mm -hmm. I've met food bloggers, like people who actually like do this professionally um, mm -hmm. so they have their own website and they also write for magazines and stuff like that um, yeah. and I know it's a slightly different format so like a magazine or their own food blog they would obviously have a longer review and that's not something that they would copy and paste into Google Maps because mm -hmm. Google Maps reviews should be short 
Um, but yeah, it's quite interesting that it, I can understand from Google's point of view that they see it as a duplicate content, but it's also from the same author though. So I don't know. So it's a weird yes, one. Yes. Yeah. That, that, yeah. But it's it's of course tough for them to judge because Verify, on yeah. the other platforms there there's another name probably for that user. So is it really yeah. the same or yeah? They're, they're, yeah. I guess the way to approach the way to approach it, if you really must um, submit your review to two different platforms, just remember that Google Maps reviews you want to keep it really short because uh, people when they use Google Maps they want to look at it and they want to quickly um, decide and move on. It's it's a very active um, workflow. They look for something, they find the information, they do it. Whereas uh, going to a website is more of a like a research kind of thing. So mm -hmm write the longer reviews on your own personal mm -hmm. blogs or whatever it is, and then keep yeah. a shorter version of it for Google Maps. So that way there's no duplicate content, but actually you've done the work for mm -hmm. both. Yeah. Actually, while I'm thinking of it with your facts method and, and then writing a longer text with different uh, parts in it, mm -hmm. is there actually a possibility to include some layout stuff while writing reviews in your text? I mean, bolds or is that... Or how do you organize the, then the, the different sections of your review? Uh, I used to, this was in the longer version when I used to write the longer mm -hmm. version of, of reviews. I used to write one to two sentences for every category. So there's five categories. Mm -hmm. So there'll be like yeah. a long sentence, a long review. But I would break it down to paragraphs. Um, okay. And the weird thing is that when you're submitting the review, you can break it down to paragraphs, but once you publish it or you submit it, if I remember correctly, uh, Google Maps actually removes the line breaks. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, although I've seen some reviews with line breaks intact, so it's, it's a really mm -hmm. weird thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would. there's no formatting that you can use in mm -hmm. uh, a map review, unfortunately. So the only way to do it is just use line breaks, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Computers, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether is it like a desktop thing versus the mobile thing because the two can be quite yeah, different quite sometimes. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you give somebody some advice uh, for mobile and what you do is from Android and then they say, no, I have an iPhone and then it doesn't work works differently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, I hadn't expected... Otherwise, but this will definitely become my longest episode so far. But, yeah, that's the risk of, of finding Adrian. Yes, unfortunately, I do talk a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. No problem. What, uh, what, uh, it's also one of the advantages of podcasts. It's, it can take very short. It can take very long. There's no, yes. no fixed, uh, fixed format. No having to force. Uh, I will have to cut here and then remove yeah. two sentences there. And what, well, I, I hope it's, it's interesting enough that people would stay on yes. to listen to the full interview. Yeah. <laughs> yes, great. Adrian, um, mm -hmm. thank you very, very, very much for at, at your place. It's um, right now uh, 1 a.m., I think, or yes. already one, or almost 2 a.m. It's almost 2 so a.m. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for, for staying up. But I don't want to let you go without uh, giving you the opportunity to talk about the uh, Go Logo podcast. Yeah. I'm going to extend your episode slightly longer because okay. I want to talk a little bit about um, best practices, about um, when you're writing reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of okay, is it's quite a general thing. Um, so it contains, it talks about photos, reviews, and videos. So basically, if you're doing um, visiting a place and you're wanting to think about what photos you want to take uh, of the place, against that, I would recommend keep the number count as small as possible. So I normally do up to about 10 photos. I know sometimes you can do more, depends on the venue again. But the way I look at it is that um, the important things that you want to include in your photos would be front of venue, uh, so the building itself, the entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to take pictures of the accessibility points. Um, the general view inside, uh, the menu, and also food and drinks. Obviously, I always reference to cafes because it's my favorite spot. Um, <laughs> minimize your duplicates. Okay, so you may take 20 photos of the same dish from different angles, but you choose just one of those photos to upload. Don't upload more. 
Um, and the reason for that is that you will find that if you do too many duplicates, you run the risk of getting flagged by Google system and you run the risk of getting um, suspended um, from the program. So you don't want that to happen. And also from a quality point of view, it's not great for a user to see 10 photos of the same different same thing, just from a slightly different angle. It doesn't, it's, it's pointless. Okay, um, I also don't do selfies. That's my personal um, choice, I guess. I don't find them very useful. Um, but if you're doing a group shot, I tend to advise that you do it in a candid manner. So not your friends all posing there because uh, I, just, I prefer to take a candid shot to make sure that that's the, the it gives a, a general sense of the atmosphere in the, the venue rather than a pose picture. Mm -hmm. um, so as much as possible, try to keep it candid, try to keep it real. Um, don't make it fake and stuff like that. And don't edit your photos to make it look like super nice when it's not actually that nice. <laughs> And when it comes to reviews, which is what we're talking about today, um, try to write your review as soon as possible um, so that it's fresh in your, in your mind. Um, don't leave it like me for months and months before I actually write my reviews. Um, but thankfully, I take lots of photos so I can actually remember it from the photos. Um, but do another thing I that... Say, don't do as I do. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because <laughs> I know it's like I've experienced it. It's bad. Uh, so don't do what I do. Um, but... I also try to avoid writing review at the venue itself. And I, so, I know it sounds a bit strange, but some local guides have mentioned before that um, they submit the review while they're still at the venue or the place. Um, and then the right. business owner would come up and say hi to them. And I just find that very weird. It's, right. It may be a nice thing. It may be a nice mm -hmm. thing if it's a nice experience, but uh, I find it a little bit creepy, like they're a bit too attentive to their social media mm -hmm. accounts. Uh, so I don't know, I find it a bit weird. I always like to be anonymous when I review a place. And I also try to make sure that I'm not getting any special treatment. So um, again, I've heard stories where uh, local guides would kind of almost like introduce themselves that they're there to review the place. And, you know, and then sometimes upon they get... Upon entering the place, you mean? Upon entering the place, yeah. So when they, they approach a staff member... Uh, or if they are taking lots of photos and people, the staff members are asking them, so what are you doing? Why are you taking so many photos? And they explain. Um, sometimes they get special treatment and I don't like that personally. I think it really blurs the line between being unbiased and being neutral in your experience. Um, so even if people ask me what I'm doing, I'm just saying like, oh, I'm just taking photos for my own personal uh, consumption. Uh, I don't explain that I'm doing a review or anything like that because I don't want any special treatment. You know, so it's, it's a kind of gray area, but you shouldn't be rewarded for the things you do because this is all a volunteer basis. And also businesses shouldn't feel that, feel pressured to give you incentives to write a positive review. They're there trying to make money, uh, you know, legitimately. So they shouldn't be giving you discounts or freebies and stuff like that, uh, you know. And lastly, for videos, uh, don't forget to add your videos because that's the one thing that I always almost forget to take. <laughs> It's like I've done everything, the reviews, the, the notes, and the, the photos, then I forget to take the, the video, which is a pain. Because I always remember it like the day after. I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot the video again. <laughs> and video, you only need one video, which is basically just yeah. go from one corner of the room to the other. You just pan it around, and you give a general sense of the venue itself. So again, that's, that's basically it. But that's the general best practice that I, I always use when I approach a place and I'm thinking about what I want to include in my reviews or uploads. Okay, although that video approach might be tough if the place is quite crowded. Yeah, again, it's privacy, privacy. issues, is it? Yeah. Um, privacy is one of those things that's really weird for me as well because in certain countries, it's, they don't care. It's really weird. Uh, in some countries, it's such a big deal. So again, it's like if you're doing a, a panning of a, a place, I don't know, if you, f if you wait for the place to be quiet, it gives a really weird sense of the place is quiet and dead. So, There's nobody yeah. around. The food was yeah, around. Exactly, yeah. But you could do videos of your food and dishes. Um, and again, some food and dishes, when they're presented in such a fantastic way, you know, like they're using sparklers or using dry ice, you know, a video of it actually makes it really nice rather than just a photo so again it, it depends on obviously if you're going to capture the staff member in your video make sure you ask for permission before you do your videos and also make sure you're trying to capture you don't capture their face and just focus on the food itself yeah. because 
yeah, nobody wants to really be on a video in some random review somewhere or online somewhere. So <laughs> yeah. And lastly, I guess I can Great. I can talk about the Go Local podcast. So um, absolutely. Yeah. So the Go Local podcast is another unofficial podcast. Um, it's on the Local Guides program. It's the focus is different from the Let's Guide podcast. So the way I see Let's Guide podcast is much more beneficial. It's much more technical in a sense that it has a lot more information, very much specifically about the whole program and your day to day um, workflow or activities with the Google Maps app and reviewing and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas the Go Local podcast is more of a casual, um, hipster ish <laughs> podcast. <laughs> where the idea behind it is that the focus is on the local guides community itself. So um, I like to interview uh, local guides and just find out a little bit more about them, find out their background, find out what motivates them to be active in the program and, you know, share that with the wider community. I think the the thing that pushed me to do the Go Local podcast was that uh, when I attended the Connect Life events and you meet all these amazing people with amazing stories and I wish I could capture that that experience and that magic and then share it to the wider world and, you know, showcase to people that, you know, these amazing people here are doing amazing things with the Local Guides program and you need to hear about them. So that's kind of one of the reasons where this um, Go Local podcast came about. Um, it started out as a team um, of us doing it and we were active in the first half of 2019, which feels like aeons ago. Um, but life caught up and... Doing a podcast is so, so time consuming. I have no idea how you do it. Yeah, it's crazy because <laughs> you do it very, very consistently. Um, and it's such tough work. Uh, you think like 30 minutes of audio is easy? No, it's, it's more than 30 minutes. It's a lot more <laughs> involved. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I, I also had to, uh, at the start, I had one episode every two weeks, but now it's <laughs> like one per month, and that's already. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. you're you're yeah, you're always in an episode, and that's. Uh... Yeah, you never get a break from it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then when you're doing an interview with with other people, uh, sometimes more than two people, it gets really complicated because uh, we tend to do this online, and everybody tends to be from some far flung area of the world. Um, so you have a lot of technical issues um, that you have to get over to try to get the, the podcast running properly. So it's been really challenging for us, and, but I hope to keep the Go Local podcast idea running. Um, there was a spurt of activity at Connect Live 2019 where I managed to interview quite a few of the local guides there, and it's gone quiet again. Um, but then it's kind of transitioning to a, a new, slightly different project that I'm working on which is making Go Local Podcasts uh, a video-friendly podcast. So that's why, unsurprisingly, um, I am recording this interview as well, and it yeah. will eventually make its way onto the YouTube channel of the Go Local Podcast. So thank you, Jan, for letting me record this. Um, obviously, I'll no wait for your, your podcast to release first, and... If I'm lucky enough to finish my video podcast in time, I'll wait a few days after that and then release it. Um, but you know me, I'm always slow and behind on everything I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's the idea. Um, if you want to subscribe to us, we can find us on the Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, the whole lot. We are all there. Um, just search for us on the YouTube channel as well and subscribe. And hopefully you enjoy the uh, program set or the episodes that we're going to put on there. And already there, so thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you once again. As I said, for you, it's already quite late or early in the morning, whatever you want to uh, call it. So, thanks once again for uh, taking your time, a lot of your time <laughs> for the interview. <laughs> and I'm yep. quite sure we'll, uh, and, and hopefully, yeah, we will meet in person quite soon. One of these yes. uh, years at one of the events at a meetup or a connect live let's, let's yeah see. definitely Adrian, yeah. thank you very much and see you soon Sorry. all right thank you so much have a great time see you then all all right and that's it done i hope you enjoyed that interview and slash discussion i also have a post about the rating and review methodology which you can find in the episode description down below if you like this video do give it a thumbs up and it will certainly make my day if you would subscribe to the channel as well. 
So hit the like button and the icon bell thing to get notification for when future episodes get released. And tell me, what do you think about the facts method to rate and review places? And what about my best practices for photos, videos, and reviews? Do you hate it? Do you like it? Do you agree with it? You know, what's your method for rating and reviewing places? I'm curious to know. So do let me know in the comment section below, or you can find me at the Local Guys Community Forum, and that's at localguysconnect.com. That's it for episode 15. I'll love you and leave you. And until next time, stay safe, folks, and let's guide. Reading Dan Brown at the moment, are you? <laughs> it's a book that I've always been wanting to read, and I've been carrying okay. it with me for the past year or so. <laughs> Never <laughs> started it. Yeah, there was always yeah. one more post to write and one more comment to give. <laughs> <laughs>